Hi everybody, this is Phil Haloka from Complete Captive Management Services. And today, we're ending the 2022 year with an interesting conversation about insurance treaty years. I can't imagine a better way to ring out 2022 than talk about treaty years. So, what's the conversation today? Well, underwriting profits, who gets them, and when do they get them? So we're gonna spotlight group captives because that's the majority of the solutions that are out on the market today. So when we talk about group captive underwriting profits, a direct writer captive has a few similar calculations for under, per underwriting profit calculations, but not as complex as this. So let's jump right in. So who has the right to the underwriting profits of a captive insurance solution? Well, simply put, the owners of the captive. So that's why it's so important to discover who is the owner of the group captive before you invest, okay? So ownership is defined in really one of the three main agreements, the subscription agreement, the membership agreement, or the operating agreement. You may not, it's unlikely that you're gonna have all three agreements, you may only have one or two, but ownership and owner and subscriber's rights will be defined within one of these core agreements. So within these agreements, you've gotta pick out the important items regarding the underwriting profits. The first one is, if you are entitled to the underwriting profits, what's that look like? Is it a schedule? Is it a 100% of the earned underwriting profits are distributed to the members? That's good. But if it's open-ended, open-ended meaning the board of directors decide how much and when to release, or maybe who controls the captive defines who gets the underwriting profits and when they are released. You should stay away from an open-ended type of who's due underwriting profits. The second one are, how are they calculated? And we're gonna talk about some of that down here, but you should really have an understanding of when profits are had or earned, how are they calculated? It's not as easy as saying received 100, paid 50, now there's $50 of profits. You would think that would be that easy, but it's not. Can profits be forfeited if I leave the captive? That's an important question because many times a group captive will say, hey, Mr. Smith, welcome to our group captive. You're gonna earn underwriting profits until you leave. And then if you leave, we're gonna hold your underwriting profits as ransom or not pay them out to you. So you gotta watch because things change over a business life cycle, which may make captive participation a good thing or a bad thing. You just don't know. And when and how are the underwriting profits released? This talks about are they released as cash? Are they released as an offset to the stop loss premium or the insurance premium? You just don't know, so you need to f inquire how they are released. Okay, four important things to look up when you're reading these documents. And if you're not very comfortable interpreting these four things, you always have legal counsel or a captive manager that can help you understand those things better. So we understand who gets the underwriting profits. Now when? Well, before we talk about when, we've got to talk about a treaty year. And a treaty year in insurance terms is not as easy as a 12-month period. This purple box here depicts a calendar year. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Now, most policies start on January 1. Policy 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Those policies will last 
12 months, and they will have some type of tail at the end of them. Now, what if you have policy number 10 issued on December 1st of the first year, 2022? Well, that 12-month policy extends 12 months into the next year plus the tail. So this policy will extend the treaty year until 2024. Now this generally angers those policy holders that started in the first half of the year because their assets and their profits are tied up because of this guy. Now there's ways around this, but for the most part, the treaty year is beholden to the last policy issued within a calendar year. So this treaty year consists of a start date of January 1st, 2022, and goes all the way out to February 28th of 2024. That's 26 months long. Why that's important? Let's talk about it. So in a group captive with a fronting carrier, Remember, the fronting carrier holds the cash. So in year number one, 2022, let's assume a million dollars of premium have been collected, $800,000 of losses and expenses, leaving $200,000 of profit. Well, this profit is earned by the captive, but it's held by the fronting carrier. So that profit is earned and held for a period of time. Now, let's assume that in year two, 2023, the captive has collected 1.25 million, and then in year three, two million, and then year four, two and a half million. So the earnings for 2022 are held until the end of the treaty year, and then the fronting carrier will hold that even beyond. The 200,000 that, that was earned in 2022 will most likely be released in 2025. Well, why is that? Well, let's say in year two, it was a bad year and there's $100,000 of losses. Well, the captive has no cash because the fronting carrier is holding the cash. So the fronting carrier is protecting its financial interests by holding the profits for a period of time. And that's expressed here. Okay. So the fronting carrier holds the $200,000 and because of this underwriting loss that the carrier can't go back to the captive and say, give me 100,000 because the captive has no money, because all of the profits are sitting with the fronting carrier, okay? So, forfeited. Let's say if you're a captive or you're a corporation and you join here, and you're here, and then you say, no, wait a minute, this, this, I don't like what's going on, there's something fishy. If I leave in this year, am I forfeiting the profits that I earned in this year? If I leave in 2025, that's where this comes in, okay? And how are the profits distributed? Well, if I'm policyholder number one and I paid 100,000 of premium and I incurred 60,000 of losses, 40,000 of profit is my portion of this 200,000, okay? But if policy number 10 paid 100,000 but had 200,000 of losses. Is this guy getting any portion of this 200,000? If, <coughs> if so, that means it's coming out of this guy's pocket, right? This guy contributed 40,000 of profit. Now they're getting diluted down by this guy who's not profitable. So this comes into play if your group captive issues no new lasers because policyholder number 10 may have a very costly employee that is going to forever be losers. And if they are taking profits, that means they're diluting profits from those that 
have better experience. Hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, be sure to reach out. We'll talk to you again in 2023. Have a good week. Bye now.